February 14th, Valentine's Day, a day treasured around the world by lovers, and sometimes even by optimistic singles. Hi, I'm your host, Ryan, and on this program, we are going to meet with people from all different cultures, all different countries, and talk with them about love. We have people coming in from the Middle East, South Asia, direct from India, people from Costa Rica, Mexico, and some very flavorful New Yorkers to sit right here and talk with you about Valentine's Day. Welcome. Hi, this is Samada. And uh, well, happy Valentine's to everybody before anything. And uh, what I want to talk about is actually my first crush. And this was in kindergarten. Believe it or not, I had a crush on a girl. And I still remember her name. Her name was Sarah, in Spanish, Sara. And uh, the funny thing was that I had to compete with the class bully for her attention, <laughs> which was kind of, you know, strange, but horrible, actually. And those were the days when uh, we actually had to bring Valentine's cards for everybody. So that was kind of cute, where like you didn't have to pick just the boys or just the girls. I think you used to bring for everybody. Too bad we don't do that anymore. Like, you know, people going to their work and bringing Valentine's cards for everybody. That would be a cute thing, but I know if people did it or someone did it, they would think they're a little strange. As far as dating, in the trans community. Most people like to think it's difficult, but really it's all about how you feel inside. And I, I think that can be said for everybody, anybody, gay, straight, uh, trans. Uh, it's all about how you feel on the inside and when we're ready to let love in. I haven't personally let love in yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to that. And it's something that uh, I think is the most beautiful thing in the world to be in love, you know, especially in this Valentine's uh, day. It could be difficult, I think, but just be hopeful for love and uh, it'll come. I think uh, the best time for uh, you to tell someone that you're trans is as soon as you meet them. I mean, a lot of the times they already know. And if they don't, you always have to make sure that you tell them as soon as you feel some kind of spark between the two of you. I think it's really good that you tell people and are open and be proud of who you are, whether you're transgender, transsexual, uh, whatever it is that you uh, feel more comfortable, you know, being called. I think uh, you should definitely say it right away as soon as you meet the person in case they don't already know. Now, speaking of sparks, uh, someone that I wish that I would spark with is, of course, a celebrity crush. And um, being that it's around Super Bowl time, uh, Tom Brady would be nice. <laughs> I love jocks. I mean, he's a beautiful man. Uh, he's got a career and he's intelligent and again he's gorgeous <laughs> you know who wouldn't want to be with Tom Brady and as far as like celebrity couples I think more seriously uh, they call him Brangelina but it's uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie I think they're a beautiful gorgeous couple not only physically are they beautiful but I love all of their humanitarian work that they do I mean, they, these people don't have to do anything, but they choose to do all this humanitarian work all over the country, not even just in the United States. And I think that's really, really important for famous people to do, especially when there's two powerful ones together. I think it's, it's a good thing that they do a lot of humanitarian work, and that really makes them even more beautiful, I think, as a celebrity couple. And speaking of beautiful, the love song that's like one of my all-time favorite love songs that I always said I will play at my wedding is that song by Dido. Uh, what is it called? Thank You. I want to thank you for the best day of my life. That is one of the most beautiful songs ever. And if I ever do get married, I think that's going to be my wedding song. <laughs> Never give up. You know, love is uh, one of the most beautiful things in the world whether it's romantic love, family love, or friendship love. Just give out what you want to receive, 
you know that's really what it's it's about if you give out a lot of love you know you're going to get back a lot of love it's it's impossible you know not for it not to work that way you know happy valentine's day everybody hi my name is gabriel do i believe in love at first sight oh do i i fall in love at least five times a day i would describe sexy as being completely confident with yourself and expressing yourself with complete honesty and accepting who you are because to me that is the ultimate in sexy. What it's like for a single gay man dating in New York City is like climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> it's like finding your way through a maze of different personalities and if you come up with someone who is completely honest and true and sincere, then I think you're on your way. Have I ever hurt anyone that I've been in love with? Um, yes. Probably because I couldn't have them. Sex in a relationship can be important, but for me, I don't think it is. I need to see someone at least, you know, once a day, if we're dating. And um, even if it's just a touch base, or say hi, or goodbye, or kiss, or get off, um, at least once a day, that would be ideal. The love story that I would have loved to have been in, and I feel like I have been, <laughs> is Romeo and Juliet. I think that in all of my relationships, I think of them as life or death. And I feel like I die and then fall in love again and am reborn. The love song that describes how I love would have to, would have to be um, Forbidden Love by Madonna because Forbidden love is the sexiest love. Forbidden love to me is everything I've known since I was a kid all the way up to now. And that is because I fall for people I can't have. And sometimes when I can have them, I don't want them because it's ultimately more intense and addictive to be in love or in lust or to desire someone you can't have. The devilish smile is um, thinking about how great it could be. Would I do the whole um, gay marriage thing if it were legal? Absolutely. It depends on the, the, the right person though. Um, yeah, he would have to be incredibly intelligent, um, probably older, probably identify as heterosexual, um, maybe have children, I don't know. Um, my favorite couple has always been Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe. I love that couple and to me that, that was ideal. So um, that's what I would love to embody in a marriage. This is something I got to identify my, or it's more of a protest to someone that I loved. And I actually believed in love that much. Um, I still do, I guess. But perhaps I'm still defining what love truly is. Hi, I'm Ryan. Happy Valentine's Day. And if you don't already know this, Yes, Valentine's Day is a holiday that I celebrate. But if we talk about the holiday, it's really a day of love. So it's maybe not something that I always celebrate on February 14th. You could take someone you love out to eat any day of the year. So I'd like to say I celebrate Valentine's Day 365 days a year. Now, if I could pick anywhere in the world to take my Valentine, it wouldn't be very far from home. I mean, in New York City, we have theater. We have how many different restaurants? If you can't find it here, 
all right, you want a clean subway, you have to go somewhere else. But if it's something you want to share with your partner, it's here. And I live in New York City, so I really wouldn't want to take my partner very far from home. But what I would want to do is go out to one of the fine restaurants here in New York City, probably wear a nice bold red shirt to let everyone know that, yes, I was celebrating the holiday. You don't necessarily have to be in love, though, and have a partner to celebrate Valentine's. My best, and I hate to say this to any of my Valentine's, but my best, favorite Valentine's Day story is my friend Christy threw a party at her apartment and she was single and she's like I am not going to be alone on Valentine's Day so she threw a singles ball she called all of her friends up and she's like sign up what you want to bring and make sure it's resemblance of a party so I brought aerobic music thinking if the party starts to die down we could put this in and sure enough we did someone else brought their favorite pizza from Penn Station of course there was a six pack of beer somebody else made cupcakes. We danced all night long in her Greenwich Village apartment. People who had partners had to show up solo just so they could attend the singles ball. And all of us coming together, it was incredible. That was the best Valentine's I've ever had. So if you do not celebrate this holiday because you don't have a partner, think about your decisions on how you're choosing not to celebrate because you certainly have options. My name is Kenya. My definition of love, it will be to have that feeling in your stomach, the little butterflies, the little anxiety. Uh, that's how I define love. And the ideal Valentine's Day for me for this year will be a nice meal at my table, somebody cooking for me. The most profound thing that my first love taught me was to believe in myself to love myself before I can love others. Do I believe in love at first sight? I do. I just wish that the other person will believe that too. For me, being a single parent, mother of two beautiful girls, thank God for them, uh, now I'm starting to see love in a different perspective. And I got my first beautiful love card from my kid when she brought it home about two years ago. I love kindergarten, let me tell you. Having kids and having a loved one and trying to balance that, I think it's very important for uh, parents and single parents to know how to define which kind of love and how to balance it. Um, you are like, think about like you're a machine and every time you have to perform something, you have to switch a button. You have to know where your buttons are. And you have to make sure that the love for your kids is not bigger than the love for your partner or vice versa. Otherwise, one of the other parts is going to end up hurting. Well, the places that I have lived in is uh, Costa Rica, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, and I now live in the United States. Central America has a very um, profound and strict structure of what marriage with is. To me, marriage is sign a paper that doesn't mean nothing. I don't believe in marriage. Not that I won't want to be married, but I think if you can find a person that will stay with you, will cry with you, will clean after you when you need it, that is there for you and for the ones that you love and you consider that that's your circle, I think that's the one. And when you decide that you want to get married, don't do it for the party. Don't do it for the present. Do it because that person has shown you that, like Mary says, for the better of good, and until the death, please. Heterosexual life is very boring. It's boring. You go to work, you come home, your kids go to school, you go out dancing. Okay, you all you do is like every, uh, birthday parties, kids' birthday parties, parents' birthday parties, lunches, Maybe you are go out dinner, maybe you are go to the club. If you go to the clubs, there's always a fight and you end up going home. Why? Because everybody's paying attention to what you're wearing, 
who is that person, or they'll start bugging you. Oh, don't get me started. But if we go, like I go out with my friends and I go out to gay clubs and it's fun. And somehow, for some reason, I end up being all gay all night. They assume that I'm gay. They assume that I may be a transvestite or I have a wig on. This is my own hair. Or I don't know. I guess I love their environment and I don't feel threatened. That's the whole thing. If you go to a heterosexual place, you always have that in you that, oh, you, you can be yourself because there's always either a girl or boy judging you. You can't get up and go and dance by yourself. If you love the song, get up and go dance. If you don't have a partner to go dance, get up and go have fun. The whole reason of working six or seven days a week and have one night for yourself, enjoy it. Why should we just, just wait for somebody to take you out? Take yourself out. Have fun and happy Valentine. Feliz Dia los Amores. Hi, I'm Girish, originally from India, Mumbai. It's almost a day in the flight, like to come down to India, Mumbai especially. And wishing you all a happy Valentine's Day too, first. And to let you know more about the city is like, why I love Mumbai more is that it never snows over there and that's the best part and the other part is that we do celebrate Valentine's in Mumbai in India it's a bit of a difference because we used to have it with our friends we used to after college like we used to hang out give non-romantic gift but just like a you know as friendly gifts like just giving out t-shirt or whatever gift you like to give it and go out for lunches or dinners in a group but here is more of a difference, like yeah, it's more of like chocolates and flowers and romantic dinners with candlelights. And those are the things, this feel of a difference between India, Mumbai and the way we celebrate here in New York. That's the way it is. My first crush was Lynn and she happened to be a waitress and I was a chef and we really were into each other. and. It started from there and then I realized the difference between loving somebody, caring for somebody and liking somebody and the way how you're, you know, when you like a friend or anyone you care for and loving, you know, there are two different. So I had a good Valentine's here in New York with my aunt and it was a kind of a surprise for her too because we went out for a grocery shopping and we ended up like, you know, let's go out for a lunch. And I take her out for lunch and I told her, will you be my Valentine's? And she was also happy, like she was smiling. And she said, well, where do you want to go? So we went for a lunch and I gave her a drape. That's kind of, a, in Indian words, we call it a sari as a gift. And she liked it. As you know, I had an opportunity to pick my Valentine's and that was my aunt. And it's like not everybody has the opportunity to pick up like who they want to be and who they can get. And back home, like if you see in India, we have different cultures, like, you know, mostly still practiced. It's like parents decide like whom they want to get their kids or get married and where they can be happy and happily living and settle down. And it's both the families that do it. And over here is the difference that they try to decide on their own, they think about their own, there's no arranged marriage as much, but mostly it's all love marriages and sometimes it ends up in different, different ways and different things like, you know, but over there is like, there is always a way, the parents will definitely find out a way to get back the kids together, they will not want them to be separated, they will still have that together love because they decided who their partner will be, whom they have to be with. It's my decision now, I have to decide whom I want to be with my partner will be. But I definitely want my family, my parents to be a part of it and let them know also and they should be aware of it. That whom I really love, that they should also accept the person whom I really in love with. My way of showing love for someone who is really special would be like come home straight in the kitchen, cook something special 
and with a nice romantic song or a movie, watch, relax and feel it at each other. There is a different way you can express in different language also. If you like to express to your partner in uh, Indian word, in Hindi, would be Main tum se pyar karta hoon. That's I love you. It might be a bit difficult, but still I can say it again. Main tum se pyar karta hoon. It doesn't matter what, what age you are and you are, if you are single, couple, you can get more stronger if you can still celebrate Valentine's and still celebrate the love. Like as I am doing it, like I am trying to throw a party at my place and it's going to be inviting all my single friends and couples, all mixed crowd, everyone is coming over. And I want to have a different feeling like, you know, I have a feeling that why not does, I have love for them and they have love for me so they care for me also and they are ready to come to me and I want to cook food for everybody in my place and try to make them feel as much comfortable and want to celebrate Valentine's in a different manner, in a different way. So it's not just having a dinner stuff light, but just have fun together. That's more about it. And wishing you all a happy Valentine's Day and may all the wishes come true, whoever is looking still for someone. Hi, my name is Nicholas and my definition of love is when two people's chemistry is so much intertwined that they really can't be separated and they don't even know why. I personally do believe in love at the first sight. It could be physical, but also the conversation and the first few sentences will take you somewhere where other people did not to, so probably this is a first step towards a long, long road of true love. I uh, came from another country, I came from the Middle East, and over there we did not celebrate Valentine, but we obviously believed in love just like everybody else. Love for us was uh, contained, it's not as spontaneous, but uh, I was one of the lucky ones that who really experienced it uh, at a young age and it was true and the heartbeats and the uh, uh, excitement it was all all there and uh, then i moved to france and from france in france uh, i although i did not experience deep love but i i uh, paris will make you fall in love maybe in and out and you haven't been to paris then you need to go there to see what paris will do to you well in french uh, they say je Je t'aime beaucoup. Uh, I love you in French is I probably is the, the most romantic way of saying I love you. Uh, in Italian, it's hot. It's hot. Italian, ti amo e ti amo così. Ti amo. I like you just the way you are. Ti amo così. Or just ti amo. So uh, there are a lot of uh, people from, uh, from Europe and if you learn how to say I love you in uh, different languages, it will be your door into true love. Who knows? Back to the Middle East. In the Middle East, unfortunately, people do not have the right to love. It's a male-dominated society. Men decide who to love and women have to follow, but not in every aspect of society. Uh, by religion, it's divided, and so by culture. Some women decide for themselves, but mostly it's a man-dominated man society. So uh, you, you might say that a man can say, well, I love you, and the women say, well, I don't, and then there's a problem because the families get involved, and why and why not. On the other side, the gays and lesbians have no rights. Although men walk hand in hand with men on the streets in the Middle East, it's very common, but that, that is not a sign that they're gays. It's just a sign of true friendship. So if you go to the Middle East, you want to walk with your boyfriend hand in hand, you're welcome. Nobody knows that you, both of you are gay. Lesbians, it's the same story, but they don't walk really hand in hand, except that they can't really have marriages and they can't be openly gay and lesbians, but they, they can have a life. Um, under the table, but a secretive kind of life. 
um, probably their best friends would know, some family members down the line they might know. Think of it, it's not a free uh, society, but there is love. You can find some kind of love in there. I uh, also have a recommendation on this Valentine, something I've never seen before. What about a Valentine parade? For God's sake, we have a Halloween parade? This is New York City's couples, heterosexuals, bisexuals, homosexuals, gays, lesbians, you name it, transgender, everybody should come out on Valentine's Day and celebrate together with, by having a parade. We should all dress up nicely and appropriate for the, for the Valentine's Day and try to find a, tr a new meaning for love or a new relationship. We should celebrate together. That's, the, that's what I see, see it. And I hope you agree with me and let's have a parade next year. Uh, they're having one in Rio in Brazil today. It's the first week of February. We can have one on the second week of February right here in New York and all over the world. Happy Valentine's Day. Well, we do know that Valentine's Day is not just a holiday. It really embodies people's love, how they love, and how they've learned how to love. I mean, we've learned about arranged marriages from India as well as Girish's opinions on that. Trans love with Samara. Nicholas wants to start his own Valentine's Day parade what it's like to be a mother and how to separate the two different types of love, love that you need from a partner and the love you need to give your children. There's so many different ways to love and hopefully through this program we've invited you to think more openly about different types of love. It doesn't stop here. The good keeps going when you go out and spread the love next. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm your host Ryan. Until next time.